This week it's part two of how to read faces and spot a lying liar who lies. Liar. This episode of Scam School brought to you by Netflix. Go to netflix.com slash scam school for your free trial membership and Squarespace. Welcome to the show that truly, sincerely believes honesty is a virtue. For suckers. Scam School, the only show dedicated to social engineering at the bar and on the street. I'm your host, Brian Brushwood, and we are back with part two of our interview with Clark Freshman, professor of law, expert in lying, and most importantly, facial expressions. Let me see if I can get a read on this one. Does that, that hurt? How's that feel? So what I'd love to hear about is the synthesis. So let's say you've got your baseline, you start collecting data as you're, as you're talking, Based on the context, how do you know how to interpret their gestures? So we find out the first step is to notice the baseline, then to notice when there are deviations, and there are other things that you just want to notice. So for example, uh, besides the deviations from baseline, you want to notice is there a disagreement between what they're saying verbally, which might be, yeah, I want to go out with you, but non-verbally, they're saying either no or I'm not sure. So, so what, would that, what would that look like if they're saying? Slight shoulder shrug. So usually it's with one shoulder, quickly and not fully up like that. Okay. Sometimes it's with both. So, if you look on the internet and you look for Jonathan Edwards denying that he had an affair, denying that he has this love child, he'll say, I never loved anyone besides my wife. And then he does a little shoulder shrug there. It's a negation. If you look up Cato Kalin, uh, I don't think it's on my website, but it's on the website for Lie to Me. Uh -huh. You can see him being interviewed and he said, uh, that's not true. I don't have a book deal, but he does a slight shrug. You say to somebody, well, you know, I'm thinking that maybe you'd like to have an open relationship. And they say, uh, no, that's not true. But they do a slight shrug. Now, these are all cases where, where you know the truth after the fact and you're able to go back and retrofit it. Are there any false positives that yes, you run absolutely. into? absolutely. Totally run into false positives. There is nothing that is like Pinocchio. Pinocchio is perfect, right? Pinocchio's nose, every time he lies, his nose gets longer. Right. He doesn't lie for any other reason, right? So there is perfect... No false positives, no false negatives. Right. There is nothing else like that. There is nothing that is 100% successful. But here's the good news. Uh, on their own, on your own, most people are no better at detecting lies than flipping a coin. They're just terrible. So if you learn a few things, like don't pay attention to looking into people's eyes, they can lie to you looking into their eyes, look for their shoulder shrug, that's gonna help you out a little bit. Look for their changes and when they're nodding, when they're not nodding, that's gonna help you out a little bit. It doesn't mean that you're always going to figure out exactly who is going to call you back and give them your number, but you'll improve your success rate. You'll cut off those conversations that are useless earlier on. Uh, well, so the scenario is you're, uh, you've been talking to somebody for a few minutes. You realize uh, they're not showing a lot of disgust. They're not showing a lot of contempt. You realize that uh, you're, you're kind of aroused, and so you want to find out. Uh, should I cut and run? Yeah, or? Should, I, should I cut and run, or should I keep talking? Because it's you know 11 o'clock at night. There are other, there's plenty of time left to like meet somebody else. Why waste your time? How do you know if someone's actually interested or not? Right, and that's is it the type of thing? I, exactly, and right. that's the type right. of thing where where definitely I assume that. You know, we're all, uh, many of us have low self-confidence and we're like, well, at least she's still talking to me, even if I'm getting the wrong signals. But but I suppose if what you actually want is to start a relationship, if you're getting all the wrong signals, you might as well just, just move to someone else. Right, but for your own sake and for the other person's sake as well, right? right. You wanna move on to somebody else. So the first thing to notice is, well, do you like the do, do you like this person? Do you like what you're seeing? Which is partly noticing, do you feel like they're being honest with you? And for certain people, that means different things. You guys know by now just how great Netflix is. You know they deliver movies directly to your home, saving you time, money, and hassle. And as an unlimited member, you get DVDs by mail in about one business day. But way better than that, you can instantly watch thousands of TV episodes of movies streaming directly to your PC, Mac, or right to your TV on a Netflix-ready device like your Xbox, PS3, Nintendo Wii console. You watch as many movies as you want, shipping is always free, and there's never any late fees or due dates. You keep the movies as long as you like. DVDs by mail, 
plus instantly right to your TV. Get unlimited movies two ways for only $8.99 a month. And as a new member, as a Scam School viewer, you could get a free trial membership. So head on over to Netflix.com slash Scam School and sign up now. Not only will you be getting the sweetest service in all of movie history, but you'll be keeping us in business. Let's give let's give everyone at home sort of a, a tool book. We we talked about the five different things to look for when establishing right. the baseline. Pay attention to the baseline. Right. See where they're different from the baseline. Uh, notice when there are these uh, soft spots. Well, and you mentioned like, also that you started to illustrate the the look of contempt, the look of disgust. Right. What, what are some of the other okay. those? Just so just so I can know what to categorize them all as. Excellent. Okay. So contempt is uh, is a huge red light. Contempt. Uh, and research by this guy who runs something called the Love Lab. I kid you not, John Gottman up at the University of Washington. He can predict with 90% accuracy based on a 15 minute conversation who breaks up within a year. No and kidding. One of the ways is contempt by the male partner, not by the female partner, but contempt by the male partner uh, in same sex and different sex relationships. Contempt is one of the big clues. So if you're talking to somebody and he or she is showing contempt, that is a very bad sign. It does not require a lot of analysis to know that something is really going wrong. Now, doesn't totally mean that it's about you. Some people have self-contempt. Right. It's a very bad sign. So that's something to be looking for. Disgust, that's something to be looking for too. Why is this person showing disgust? Why are they doing that? Now this is a tricky one, especially for women. Women will sometimes do the disgust nose, which is like this, but they'll be smiling. And this is actually the opposite. This I is actually flirtatious behavior. Is it really? So when I, I ask Because I've seen this, point, right. yeah. So that is actually not the picture. So it's when they're doing simultaneously a sincere smile with the eyes going up like that. Right. The wrinkles by the eyes, the right. crow's feet, and they're doing a little wrinkle. That's actually flirtatious. That's not actually disgust. But when their face is otherwise blank and you say, so um, so I could really see us hanging out. And, they, and she does a little disgust wrinkle yeah. like that. Yeah. That's a bad sign. That's the time to move on. So okay. she's disgusted by that thought, that's not that's not going to be going well. Right. So, disgust, contempt, those are two to really be paying attention to. On the positive side, looking at the wrinkling by the eyes, not looking into somebody's eyes, but looking at their cheekbones and the crinkling by their eyes. And I'm noticing harder with Botox. Right. Seriously, harder with Botox. Wow, that's a good but point. But you need to be looking for the crinkling by the eyes. Now, I've noticed that even though I'm looking in your eyes, uh, I'm able to focus and pay attention to the areas right. around. Right. Fantastic. And that's very key. We did uh, some research was done, not by me looking at, can you train people with schizophrenia with very poor awareness of emotion uh, to be better aware of emotion? And they took this one hour uh, training, which is available at my uh, colleague Paul Ekman's site, you can link to through my site. Uh, what they found was that schizophrenics improved to a normal level, just like the rest of us. Uh, and when they looked to see what was happening, it was that their eyes were looking in the right places. So instead of looking just into somebody's eyes, they were starting to look at the nose. They were starting to look at the eyebrows. Are they drawing down and together, for right. example? That would be a sign of anger. Down and together would be a sign of anger or interest. The inner eyebrows going up is a very reliable sign, and usually it's just very quick, for less than a second. Very reliable sign that Darwin, of all people, identified of distress. Squarespace is a publishing system for anyone looking to build a blog, portfolio, or any kind of website. With blog tools that allow for iPhone updating while you're on the road, hassle-free importing of sites from other environments, they've got kick-ass robust stats, and so much more. Squarespace makes it super easy for anyone to build out and maintain a site that you could only dream of on other platforms. And if you do have CSS experience, Squarespace lets you jump into the code and customize things even further. Look, everybody knows, anybody who's any Anyone on the internet is already jumping over to Squarespace. The only question is, why haven't you jumped? It's getting better day by day. Head on over to squarespace.com and get your free 14-day trial, and they won't even use a credit card for you to sign up. But when you do sign up, make sure to use promo code SCAMSCHOOL at checkout. SCAMSCHOOL, all one word. Not only will you get 10% off the lifetime of your order, but you'll be keeping us in business. And that's a good thing. So I've got some other subjects that I want to go into, but is there any other obvious faces that, that we need to register in our mind that we should keep on? Uh, uh, not any that I can teach okay. really quickly. No, that's fine. Yeah, the big but, ones are disgust, disgust contempt, and uh, anger, which shows up uh, both in the eyebrows, the glaring of the eyes, sometimes the flare of the nostril, and the narrowing 
thinning of the lips. Okay. Any or all of those can be signs of anger. So, you know, that's one side is reading them, but how do we project things like confidence when we're trying to approach someone at the bar? Great, yeah, excellent, ex excellent question. Uh, people see what they want to see, right? Okay. So, so some people are generally looking for negative things and they'll see negativity wherever they find it. Other people, many people, this is why scamming works so well, they're very trusting, right? right? So they're looking for confirmation, right? So you tell someone that you love them and they really want to believe that you love them. They don't see that you're showing contempt on your face, even right. though it's right there. So uh, the problem with, let's say you want to fake happiness, mm -hmm. right? You can control the lower which, which, part by of the your way, face. That's, that's... You can't control the, the upper part of your face as much. So in terms of that, method acting would be the key, right? So if you could think of a genuinely happy experience and make yourself start to feel happy, that would be far better than just trying to control your fate. Like, hey, look yeah. at me, I'm, I'm at the bar looking for ladies. That's a bad, that's not right, a bad right, place right, to be. Right. And well, then you feel the joy and... That's right, so you create the actual emotion. Now some of that would be related to the exact situation you're in. Another one would be thinking of a happy experience from the past. And a complicated way of doing this is you can anchor it with something else. So Pavlov's dogs, for like example, a smell, anchoring, or... right, a smell, a touch. So what I do is when I meditate, I put my two fingers together like this. So, and that makes me feel calm, not totally blissed out, but pretty calm. And my emotions don't show up in my face at all. It's very unreadable. So yeah. if I'm in a meeting, I will, underneath the table, I will put my fingers together. As a, as a reminder to, right. to, to take you back to that place. It, but it's not even as a reminder, it actually does it. I know that if I'm trying to be open-minded, I'm getting annoyed, I'm trying to be like, okay, let me be open-minded about this, I mean, not sure that I'm, I really don't like this particular colleague of mine, I lift my big toe. And that is anchored to, oh, I'm being open-minded, I'm trying to see some other point of view. I'm now bobbing my head back and forth, that's another thing that's like, oh, well, let me try to like loosen up with that with somebody who knows what they're doing, it's very hard to lie to them. There are these five ways that lies leak out. Anytime you try to work on one of them, it's gonna leak out somewhere else. So let's say you're trying not to show that you're disgusted by what I'm saying, or you're trying not to have your shoulder go up. That's gonna require some amount of your brain's resources. Your brain, like a computer, like a Windows computer, not quite like a Mac. So if it's Windows, uh, the more that you're doing one thing, the more it slows down everything else. So if you're trying to lie, by, like I know my say, tell. You know your tells. And let's suppose you know that, wow, I can really show disgust or I can show contempt. You're trying to clamp down on that. Then what's going to happen is your limited resources will mean that you're not nodding your head as much or your, hand, your uh, hands are not moving as much. Now, I have not been looking because I've been maintaining a lot of contact with the camera to see what's going on in the lower part of your body. For I'll men, be honest, from time to time, my foot starts to want to bob and then I, I, and I, what, I stop it each that's time. The tell for, that's the tell more, way more for men than for women. Just spend some time looking around in a room or at a bar or wherever. Men, much more than women, will shake their legs or twirl their feet. Right. But that will sometimes stop when people are trying to control their emotions or they'll start slowing down their speech or they'll, and or they'll start having more speech errors. So ands and ands or haws or some people are pretentious and so they'll say, if you will, as it were, you know, so be it. So let you know, it be. So let it be, <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. Or the, yeah. And so all of those will be signs. So that's why it's so hard to fake an emotion. You know, if you could fake any one thing, you'd want to fake sincerity. Right. But the hardest, re the reason why you can't fake things to somebody like me or to Paul Ekman or the people who have been trained by us at Homeland Security is that we know that there are these five things to be looking for. The more you're trying to control one of them, the more that it changes to us. Even as we've been talking, now, is there you're a less animated. I don't uh, know if you're aware of that. Well, like, I mean, because I'm getting more sucked into this conversation. I'm right, just right, like, this is amazing. Be, that, that Everything else is it. starting to disappear for me. <laughs> but I do want to know, is there a particular website that we can go where we can recap everything we've talked about tonight? Absolutely. So my name.com, so clarkfreshman.com. Well, I know we're short on time, but I cannot thank you enough. We'd love to have you back on the program. Maybe we'll do some in the field experiments sometime. Great. But thank you so Fantastic, much, Clark. That Brian. was amazing. Thank you very much. Thank you. First and foremost, huge thanks for Clark Freshman for slumming with us on Scam School. We're hoping to come back and do more episodes in the future. Now, I know our time was short, so in the meantime, head over to his website, learn more about what he does, and I want you to tell me what you want to see in future interviews and experiments with Clark Freshman. So post them at the boards at scamschool.tv, where you can see all of our episodes right back to episode one. If you're doing the Twitter thing, you can follow the show at twitter.com slash scamschool or follow me personally as I travel all over the United States at twitter.com slash schwood. If you want to suggest your favorite bar scam, write me directly at brian at revision3.com. And next week, we'll be learning why the wages of lying 
are dead. <laughs>